Colossian, my friends, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. She's the best little skipper in the land. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. Won't you please give this little girl a hand? Starring George Burns and Heinz Honey, Gracie Allen, with Frank Parker, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. A hundred million songs, that's right, you can't go wrong, so for Gracie, Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Hello. Oh, George, what will it be tonight? Shall we talk about you, or shall we talk about something interesting, or shall we talk about... Richie, let's talk about me. All right. Uh, tell me about you. Uh, what do you think of the way I upset them at the Wisconsin primaries last week? You upset the Wisconsin primaries? Yes. What about Dewey? Dewey? Who's Dewey? <laughs> he's, uh, he's a Republican. Oh, he's the one. Yes, he's the one. He's the one who's running against you for president. Oh, the poor fellow. What's he going to do for a living? <laughs> oh, he'll do all right. It happens that he carried Wisconsin. Well, he won't carry it far. If you saw the front page of the Milwaukee Sentinel, you know it was a landslide for me. A landslide for you? I got 63 votes. <laughs> 63 three votes out of millions of voters in Wisconsin? Oh, well, that was only in one copy of the paper. And that paper has a circulation of 187,000. 187,000 times 63. All right, Tracy. That's bingo and never mind. Just imagine me getting 63 votes in Wisconsin yeah. last Tuesday and I wasn't even there. I see. The whole thing's silly. Yeah. I was at the Pantages Theater seeing too many husbands. All right. So it was silly. Oh, it certainly is silly. There's no such a thing as too many husbands. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I know what you mean, yes. yes. Now, if the Republicans and Democrats are going to keep nominating me at their primaries, there'll be nothing left for my party to do. And you know I'm a one-party girl. <laughs> Hello, Gracie. Oh, there's my party now. Yes. <laughs> I say, Gracie, I brought you a little remembrance. Oh, Ray Noble, why, they're Easter lilies. <laughs> yes, I want you to remember Easter. Oh, thanks. <laughs> spring, spring, I love spring. You know what Tennyson said? No, what did he say? Oh, well, I don't know, I wasn't listening, but I just love spring. <laughs> Look, uh, what's going on here? Spring. Spring. I'm George, old oh boy, would you mind taking Truman and Frank out into the hall? I'd like to talk to Gracie, and it's very confidential. It is, eh? There are millions of people listening in. Well, would you mind taking them out with you? Yeah, well, come on, folks. Let's go out. <laughs> hello, Fred. Hello, Pinky. Well, hello, Frank. Well, well, what does the man in the street think about tonight? I'm not the man in the street. Well, you will be, brother, when Gracie's elected. <laughs> First of all, Gracie is not going to be elected, and when she is, I'll be able to take care of myself. That's right. George can always follow in his father's footsteps. Mm. Yeah. What was his father? A ski jumper. <laughs> He was not. He was a baseball player. And you were his first error. Oh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> don't worry about me. I don't need a job. I've saved my money. Oh, you said it. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right, all right. Never mind, never mind. I'm not so cheap. You said it first. Oh, stop. Well, didn't you all just have lunch at my house this afternoon? Well, we haven't eaten out of paper plates since we ate over Jack Penny's. <laughs> What's wrong with serving lunch on paper plates? Well, at least you could have served it on today's paper. <laughs> Today's paper? Yeah. It wasn't a formal lunch, you know. Oh. Don't you worry right. about George getting a job. He had the sponsor to dinner last week. You said it. I had him eating right out of my hand. Oh, uh, no plates at all, huh? <laughs> Gracie, I happen to have a set of plates, and they're beautiful. Oh, especially when you smile. Smile for the lady. Please. Quiet, quiet. <laughs> I may have my faults, but on me, they look good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> especially the eye teeth. Yeah, the book you say, yeah. I said, George, you know that saying that a wise man changes his mind, but a fool never? Yeah, I know that saying, Ray. Well, would you change your mind and take Truman and Frank out into the hall so I can be alone with Gracie? Oh, uh, yeah, will you, George? But what's going on in here tonight? Well, you see, it's spring, and I want to ask Gracie to help me with my income tax. <laughs> Ray, anything you want to ask, Gracie, you ask me. Well, will you kiss me, George? Will you go away? <laughs> go away! Silliest fellow I ever met in my life. Hello? I'm Sunny Gracie Allen speaking. What? You called up to say you're going to vote for me? Oh, thank you. Well, I certainly appreciate it. What? Well, sure, I'll be glad to send you a picture. Where shall I send it? Oh, oh, just bring it home with me? Oh, hello, Mother. Oh, it's your mother. <laughs> Fine. What? The census taker was there? Well, did you tell him I wanted to ask him some questions? Oh, oh, he's on his way down, huh? Y you called him what? 
a loafer, a tramp, a hobo, a bum, a good for nothing, and a heel, and he liked it? Oh, oh, he gets four cents a name. <laughs> If your daddy was there, he could probably retire. What, Mother? Laura? She's sick? Oh, isn't that too bad, George? My kangaroo is sick. Oh, yes, Laura, the party emblem. Oh, you don't say, Mother. She has a fever of 115? Well, what are you going to do about it? Oh, I see. You're putting some potatoes in a leg of lamb in bed with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let me know when they're done. Yes. <laughs> Ought to be delicious. Well, I'll be home right after the broadcast. But don't let that lamb burn. Keep turning Laura over. Yeah, goodbye. Gracie, your family was nutty enough before you got that kangaroo. Well, it's really serious, George. Mother said they had eight doctors there today, and they all said the same thing. What did they say? Two dollars in advance. <laughs> yes, that stuff is contagious. Oh, what well, fever is nothing, Gracie. Why, once I had a fever of 120. Fever of 120? How did you live? I got an annuity. <laughs> Gracie, how did Laura, your kangaroo, get sick? Well, she caught a cold. She slept all night with her pouch open. She did, oh, well, that's all I want. Here's a grand way to keep your hands feeling comfortable when you're spring cleaning. Smooth Heinz Honey and Almond Cream all over your hands often during the day. It takes just a moment, and it's certainly worth it. For Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening to dry, chapped hands. And it contains two vitamins, too, A and D. Use Heinz before each cleaning job. It helps guard your skin against the drying effects of dust, harsh cleansers, and hot water. Then after each job, get out your bottle of Heinz again. Smooth this creamy emulsion over your fingers, especially around the cuticle, over the backs of your hands, on your dry, hard palms, up the wrists and arms. Heinz quickly coaxes back that softer look and feel. You'll find that even one application of Heinz helps your tender, work-abused hands look much nicer. So get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream tonight. The 10 or 25 cent size is handy to carry in your apron pocket as you work. The 50 cent or the big dollar size Heinz is economical for the whole family to use. Ask at the nearest toilet goods counter for Heinz. Spelled H-I-N-D-S. Now, Frank Parker. Thanks, Stu. The scene is from the musical play, The Girl from Utah. The time is the year 1914. The song is They Didn't Believe Me, composed of Jerome Kern, The Boy Me, and The Girl You. And when I told them how beautiful you are, they didn't believe me, they didn't believe me. Your lips, your eyes, your teeth, your hair are in a glass beyond compare. You're the loveliest going to tell them that I'm the man whose wife one day you'll be. They'll never believe me. They'll never believe me. That from this great wide world you chose was dreaming I dream that we promised we never would part and when I tell them and I'm suddenly going to tell them that I'm the man Believe me, 
Hank, I never get tired of listening to your singing. You know, every week you seem to get better. Ah, uh, George, you, you make me feel like a dog. You're always saying nice things about me, and here you are without a voice, without a future, very little personality, or hardly anything else. Oh, <laughs> Kid. But really, I, I'm serious, George, and I'd like to say something nice about you. Well, why don't you? Well, I will as soon as I can think of something. <laughs> I'll remember that when your option is due. Oh, don't pay any attention to Frank, George. He only repeats what everybody else says. <laughs> well, now I feel better. Oh, dear, where's Bubbles? There's so much campaign mail to answer. I've been getting letters from colleges, mayors, governors, politicians, executives, farmers, doctors. How about pajamas? Third floor, please. Lawyers. Oh, quiet, 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 quiet. And not only do I get letters... Today, I got an oil painting. It was a picture of Sally Rand. Must be valuable. Valuable? It was a whistler. A whistler? Yeah, every time my daddy looks at it, he goes... Can you whistle with your mouth closed like that? <laughs> well, we've covered everything except Sally Rand. <laughs> come in, come in. I say, come along in. Come in. Wait. <laughs> there's, uh, there's nobody knocking. Oh, yes, there is. I'll answer it. Hello. Who? Oh, just a minute. I'll tell him. George, somebody wants you, Frank and Truman, out in the hall. Um, who wants us out in the hall? I do. I'd like to talk to Gracie. <laughs> Ray, after the broadcast, you'll have all the time in the world. Oh, oh, yeah, Bubbles. My Bubbles, you've got on a new dress. Yes, it came from Sacks. The fabulous Sacks? <laughs> no, potato Sacks. Oh. <laughs> Certainly looks sexy, yeah, Bubbles. Yeah, I know. Hey, Gracie, what are we going to do with all these letters from important people? Well, just write and invite them to my surprise party convention in Omaha in May and tell them they can all be my guests. Well, that's nice. At popular prices. Well, and they'll surely come. And sign it, um, oh... Oh, what's that name again? Oh, yes, Gracie Allen. Oh, yes, that's the name. <laughs> hey, you, stop, please. Leave those cars alone. Those cars belong to George, Frank, and Truman. What's going on there, Ray? Oh, nothing. Somebody's trying to steal your cars. We haven't got any cars. Really? Well, you three fellows can borrow mine if you want to go someplace. <laughs> so uh, you can be along with Jason. George, you're psychic. Cheerio. Oh, cheerio. Cheerio. Come back here, Gracie. Oh, well, I'll see you later, Ray, and give me back my chewing gum. What? And, Gracie, here's some more letters. The Silver Lake Young Democrats, the New York State Young Republican Club. Did we get a letter from Clark Abel? Clark Abel? What's he got to do with your running? Well, who do you think I'm running after? <laughs> he, uh, he happens to have a wife. Oh, she can be repealed. You know, Gracie, I do wish you'd get elected. Then I'd have nothing to do. Nothing to do? Well, then you'd really have your hands full. Full of what? Shoelaces, newspapers, pencils, whatever you're selling, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Say, George, George, I just made a bet for us. I bet Ray Noble six dollars against six dollar bottles of Heinz honey and almond cream that he can't get Frank, you and me out in the hall. Well, that's one bet he'll lose. Ray, you lost. All right, well, I'm not a well, sir. I'll pay off. My secretary will give you the money. She's in my office. Where's your office? Out in the hall. Well, you get out of here. <laughs> Come in. Good evening. I'm the census taker. Oh, yes. My mother phoned me about you. Come in and pull up a chair. I can only sit down a second. Oh, well, then pull up a splinter. <laughs> uh, my name is George Burns. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Burns? This is indeed a pleasure. Tell me, do you smoke? Why, yes. Soothing, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Mister, you say you're a census enumerator? Have you got a card to identify yourself? Oh, he doesn't need one. He knows who he is. Mm. Gracie, why did your mother send him over here? Well, I'm being elected president, and it's very important that I find out how many people over 21 are old enough to vote. Well, I wouldn't be without a piece of information like that. Yeah. You know, Miss Allen, all the information I get is confidential. In fact, it's so confidential that half of it goes in one ear and comes out the other. Oh, isn't that kind of drafty? <laughs> yes, she'll probably catch cold uh, sleeping with an open mind. Now, you know, what I'm asking for isn't very confidential. All I want to know is what goes on with our neighbors after they pull down the shade. That's all you want to know? That's all. Well, you see, these census takers are pledged to secrecy. They can't tell anybody anything. That's right. So whatever I tell you is in strictest confidence. I said, what? <laughs> of course, I'm not the one to talk, but... The last three days, I gathered enough dirt to raise my own vegetables. Oh! Isn't that exciting? Now, look. Uh, Mrs. Jones across the street, is she a Republican, or is that her natural hair? Oh, you don't need to worry about her. She was 38 last October, and she looks it. 38? That's her waistline. Her hips are 10 years older. <laughs> well, 
her husband certainly ought to know how old she is. Oh, her husband tells you. No, I found out from the maid. Oh, the husband told her. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Mister, I thought all your information was confidential. It is, so don't breathe it to a soul. <laughs> Look, you're here to take Gracie's senses and not to gossip about her neighbors. Oh, yes, I'd better get to work. Now, Miss Allen, what is your name? Gracie. Uh, what's your surname? Sir Gracie. <laughs> I mean your full name. Oh, Gracie M. 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 Allen. Well, what does the M. 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 stand for? M. 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 Emily. I was named after my aunt and she said it. Oh, yeah, that's the one who looks like last year's calendar. Yes, the, the pretty, pretty one. one. The one without the face. Yes. Uh, do you live in Hollywood? Uh, she goes out with George Burns. Do you call that living? Oh, quiet, <laughs> quiet. Toto. <laughs> uh, I live next door to Nelson Eddy. Oh, yes, I just took his sentence. Oh, tell me, are they really happy? Or is that the vacuum cleaner I hear humming all day? <laughs> well, did you know that Nelson Eddy sings in the bathtub? How did that leak out? No plug in the tub. <laughs> Say, uh, say, tell me something. Does Nelson Eddy have a shower besides a tub? Yes. Does he have a rubber curtain? Yes. Does he have hot and cold water? Mm-hmm. See, George, what's he got that I haven't got? Shortening bread. <laughs> uh, Miss Allen, are your parents natural-born American? Well, my mother was natural-born. The stock brought her, but my father had a hitchhike. <laughs> uh, regarding income, what do you get a week? Well, it all depends. Now, one week I get a cold, one week a headache. No, I mean, I mean, what do you earn? Oh, Georgia salary. <laughs> well, uh... What, uh, what are you laughing at? I don't get it. You said it. <laughs> and here's Ray Noble's arrangement of Gracie's campaign song. <laughs> You're always able to make such swell arrangements. Well, George, if you'll set out into the hall, my sex... Never mind the hall. Just tell me right here. Well, it's very simple, old boy. You see, whenever I see spots in front of my eyes, I just write them down and the boys play them. These, uh, these spots that you see, are they... Are they... Are they dots? No, they're mine. <laughs> well, uh... That's not... <laughs> you know, my brother used to see spots in front of his eyes, but he cured himself by drinking. By, uh, by drinking? Yeah, now pink elephants hide the spot. <laughs> now, if we, can, if we can just get something for the elephant to hide behind. If you're yeah. looking at me, Mr. Burns, I'm not available. <laughs> I never mentioned you. 
For you, probably. You might as well answer. Hello? I'm Fanny speaking. Yes? Yes. Oh, how old is the little girl? Oh, really? Well, around that age, they can eat salad food. Oh, she does. Oh, well, she'll get over that. You have to expect things like that from little girls of that age. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Who's that? Judge Jessel. <laughs> I thought your kangaroo's cold was getting worse, I hope. Say, Gracie. Gracie, I read a great remedy for colds that might help Laura. Oh, good. Yes, sir. You take an old stocking, rub it with mercurochrome, and tie it around your throat. Oh, of course, you take your foot out of the stocking first. Naturally, naturally. <laughs> and then you rub your forehead with a gold wedding ring. Where did you read that, woman? At lunch today on one of your dinner plates. Look, let's settle this once and for all. If you fellows didn't like my food, why did you come to my house for lunch? Well, where else can you get a 35-cent lunch for 40 cents? <laughs> All I know is that half of my personal silverware is missing. You mean that stuff Mark Beverly Wilshire Hotel? Yeah, my personal stuff. <laughs> well, it's the first time I ever saw a sandwich made out of a slice of ham between two pieces of confetti. <laughs> <laughs> it's daintier that way and quiet. Well, I really enjoyed your lunch, and George. It wasn't just the food, it was also the hospitality. Thanks, Joe. Although the hospitality could have had a little bit more meat on it. What? <laughs> well, you know, at most luncheons, there's a very little conversation. All you hear is pass this, pass that, pass this. But at your luncheon, it was really marvelous because there was nothing to pass. <laughs> I don't know what you're complaining about, but then it didn't cost you anything. The food was on the cup. Well, it wouldn't have been if you'd served napkins. Oh, quiet. <laughs> I've had enough of this. It's going to be a cold, cold day before hey, I... Hey, George. George, instead of serving meals for a living, you can always be a singing announcer, you know. Why, with your voice, you can open up a new field. And plant corn. Oh. <laughs> singing commercials. Well, you think you're kidding. It's not a bad idea. No. What song would you use, George, to sell Heinz Honey and Almond Cream? Huh? Oh, there are thousands of songs that I can sing. Yeah, there's only one that you know, ain't Mr. Haven. <laughs> yeah? Well, what about this one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if your hands are rough and red and you're all by yourself... Get Heinz honey and almond cream, you'll find it on the shelf. A dollar could count as what does it amount to? Ten, twenty, five, fifteen dollar size, and it'll be popular with all the guys. Oh, ain't Miss Behaven, oh, by on the shelf. Oh, ain't Miss Behaven. I'm, I'm happy. Hello. Quiet. <laughs> How do you like that? It was the wrong number. Yeah, any number you sing is the wrong number. Oh, yeah. yeah. Say, Frank, I think you've got a little too far. Kidding is kidding, and Georgia, I wouldn't stand for any more. Of course, there's no harm in what he says to the elevator boy, but when he stands the right here in front elevator of elevator boy? Yes. When he stands... What, uh, what'd he say? Well, yes. I, I couldn't repeat it. Well, I'm going out to find out. I'll take that. Uh, Gracie, I didn't say anything to the elevator boy. Oh. Oh, well, then you better go out and tell George. It was Truman. I will. Gracie, I didn't say anything to the elevator boy. Oh. Oh, well, then you better go out and apologize to Frank. I certainly will. You know, Gracie, this is the first time you and I have ever been alone. <laughs> Would you rather be alone with me or alone with Maine and Vermont? Well, I'd feel a little strange with them. I don't know them as well as I know you. Yeah. <laughs> People are funnier than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I say, Gracie, I just love your campaign. Oh, thanks. I got it at Magnum. It's a copy of a 3750 model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I notice it's made of odds and ends. Yes, isn't it odd where it ends? <laughs> Rather. Say, Ray, when I have my convention in Omaha next month, you'll make a wonderful delegate. Oh, I won't always be delegate. I'm going to drink a lot of malted milk and I'll be big and strong. Well, would you like a malted milk now? With an egg? No, I'd rather have it with you. Well, oh, I say, Gracie, when you're in the White House, will you forget all about me? Well, I will if you forget about me. Well, let's just forget about each other then. Oh, well, let's write it down and then we'll remember it. Yes, we might forget it. Uh, my daddy always has a string on his finger. Why? To keep it from falling off. Hey, Gracie, would you like to sit on my lap? No, I'd rather sit on your lap. All right, then you sit on my lap. Oh, now you see? I isn't it better my way? Gracie, put your arms around me. <laughs> like this? Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I whisper something in your ear? Nah. What is it? You're stepping on my foot. <laughs> Do you mind if I whisper something in your ear? No. What is it? Pardon me. Hey, what's going on in here? Yeah, oh, hey, oh, Mr. Mr. Haven, no, oh, I'm not
Come on, everybody. Get your copy of Gracie's campaign song and start singing. We've got to get Gracie in the White House, you know, even if we have to paint the one she's in. Gracie is so proud of her song, Vote for Gracie, she wants you to have a copy. Now, all you have to do to get it is send your name and address to her on the back of a high and plenty of almond cream carton. Any size carton will do. But if you use the ten-cent size, be sure to send two cartons. Address your envelope to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. And in a few days, you get a copy of this crazy campaign song complete with words and music and a big picture of Gracie on the cover. Now, act quickly, because this offer is good for a limited time only. In the meantime, don't forget to treat your hands to Heinz. The minute you take your hands out of dishwater, comfort the chapped, red, puffy skin with Heinz honey and almond cream. Every fine drop of this creamy, fragrant lotion helps make your hands smoother and nicer. Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening, and contains two vitamins. You can get Heinz honey and almond cream at any toilet goods counter, and be sure to take the carton, write your name and address on it, and mail it to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California, for your copy of Gracie's song, Vote for Gracie. Thanks, Truman. Now Gracie will sing Frank Lesser and Jimmy McHugh's new song from Buck Benny Rides Again, My My. My talk is sticky and clever. My line was sharp as a tag. But ever since I met you, everything's gone black. I want to shout a poem about how I dream of that gleam in your eyes. I want to shout, but all that comes out is my, my. I want to sing the flowers of spring, but oh dear, when you're near, I just die. I want to sing and dance in the thing, but my, my. I should say, oh, how lovely. I should say, ah, how sweet. I should have shaped you at the tip of my tongue. But every time we meet, I look at you. And what do I do? I get weak. I can't speak. I just sigh. And though I try, the best I can sigh is my, my. Tell me why my voice don't obey. And help me to say how I go when you throw me in high. I want to cheer. But all you can hear is my, 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 my. I have a tongue that never has some pretty words about birds in the sky. When you're around, the best I have found is my, 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 my. Now, I should say how intriguing. And I, I should say how elite. I should have whipped it in the palm of my hand. But every time we meet dead pigeons. I look at you, and what do I do? I get weak, I can't speak, I just cry. And though I try, the best I can try is mine. The minute you see a jar of the new Heinz hand cream, I'll bet you'll want to try it. Why, it looks for all the world like a fine face cream. And as a matter of fact, this Heinz hand cream is swell both for hands and face. It's made by the makers of Heinz honey and almond cream. And like the famous lotion itself, Heinz New Hand Cream is quick, softening, and fragrant. Try it, will you? Well, oh, Gracie, say good night. Well, well good, night. good night. And when I'm in Washington, don't forget to drop in and see me at the White House. I don't know the address, but I'll leave a congressman burning in the window. Good night, all. <laughs> Next Wednesday, at the same time, we'll all be back again. Join us, will you? This is Truman Bradley saying good night for Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We have six politicians, so know what to do.